What's up everybody? I am here at the desk and I'm doing a little two-part video that I'm releasing here uh, tackling the question, why is it so difficult to learn to write or draw with your arm? This is a question I see getting tossed around a lot in calligraphy communities and artist drawing communities, people that are trying to learn these crafts and they're being told that they should learn to write or draw with their arm and you know you understand why because it gives you that more range of motion when you're writing or drawing you can do bigger strokes when you're using your arm to write um, but they're not really being told not only how to develop the ability to write or draw with your arm but i think even a more basic question which is nobody's really talking about why it's so difficult to learn to write or draw with your arm you know and I think if you're going to learn to write or draw with your arm, it's really important to understand what's going on when you draw and write with your arm as far as like mechanically. So you know what you're up against and you know um, how this, this arm movement system works. And then when, when you have a better understanding of that, any time you spend developing arm movement and control of arm movement is going to benefit you benefit you much more than if you don't know what you're doing so this two-part video is designed to address that question why is it so difficult to write with your arm and in this first part i literally just want to go into the basic mechanics of what's going on when you write with your arm versus when you write with your fingers okay now finger writing handwriting whatever you want to call it is what most people do when they pick up a pencil or when they draw or that when they write they they grip it real down here and in a standard whatever grip and they uh, you know they rest their hand on the table like this and then they write or draw like this and this this type of writing and drawing nothing wrong with it um, well there's something wrong with it which we'll talk about in a second but uh, it gives you lots of control you can really control the pencil point like this you can uh, you know add very small sizes too uh, you can really you can really get a lot of control. Um, the two problems with this is that your range of motion is very restricted. You can really only move as much as your hand will allow you to. And then when you start doing this type of movement over and over again, it's very straining and stressful on the hand and the muscles and the joints and all that. You're gonna get pain. If you've handwritten something for more than five or 10 minutes or drawn for more than five or 10 minutes like this, you know your hand starts to hurt and uh, that's a problem you don't want that pain uh, so yeah finger writing is great for control bad for range of motion and bad for i guess you could say endurance um, or fatigue it's very fatiguing now arm movement writing uh, traditionally i you know i study traditional american penmanship which is why i know so much about arm movement writing that whole I study a, a style of traditional American penmanship that was all done with arm movement pretty much. And so I've been studying this for over three years and I've developed my arm movement to a certain point where I have a lot of control with my arm. Um, and that's why I'm doing this video because I've, I've put the time in and I've, I understand this stuff at a pretty high level. Uh, so arm movement writing, you know, typically you could do your arm, you could do arm movement writing or drawing with your arm off the table. So you kind of more pivoting from the shoulder like this, um, you know, you keep your elbow, your wrist, everything else locked, move the shoulder around. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, which gives you a little more control is to rest your elbow or forearm muscle on the table, on the edge of the table and pivot off of that. And you can get a lot of range of motion this way as well. Um, just like that. So your fingers and everything stay relatively still and everything kind of pivots off of here like this. All right. So that's arm movement writing. Now what I want to do is I want to model these two types of motion mechanics with a simple lever system. Okay, so I have a ruler here. This is my lever. Every lever has a fulcrum or a pivot point. That's my finger. Every lever has a power source, something that moves the lever. And then every lever has a weight, which is the other end of the lever that's being moved. Okay. Now with arm writing, you have uh, your pivot point, which is going to be right here. This we'll just say for this type of arm writing, uh, which is resting on the table. That's your fulcrum, your pivot point. Okay. Your power source is going to be the muscles in your upper arm that are driving the arm and moving it all around. 
Notice that the upper arm muscles are very close to your pivot point, to your fulcrum. And then all the way on the other end of the lever, which is all the way down your hand, your arm and hand to, is where you're holding the pencil and pen, whatever you got. And that's your weight, okay? So right off the bat, one thing to notice is that you have a very long lever. So it's the whole length of from your muscles up here all the way down to where the pencil point is. Very long lever. Longer levers are harder to control. So we're already getting into why it's so difficult. Um, yeah, the longer the lever, the harder it is to control, always. Uh, if it's a motion amplifying lever, which we'll get into in a second, which the arm writing system is a motion amplifying lever system. We'll get to that in a second. Um, the other thing to notice is that the fulcrum is very close to the power source, okay? So if we go back to our ruler, we have our fulcrum, power source down here. So this is the arm writing system. Our fulcrum is very close to the power writing system. You can see, I just mentioned this word, we, this creates a motion amplifying lever, okay? You can see how my power, I'm putting very small amounts of motion into the lever system down here, and the other end of the lever is moving, amplifying that motion. It's moving much more dramatically, just with tiny little movements down here, okay? So that's, this is really the crux of the lever, of the arm movement problem, okay? Or the, it's not the problem, it's the advantage and the disadvantage, the pros and the cons, okay? So the pro is that we get this wider range of motion. We can use really small movements and we get big movements at the pencil point, at the end of the lever. So small movements in our upper arm produce big movements at the end of the lever. Um, but then the other downside of that is that it's harder to control because you're getting, you're putting these small little inputs in, you're getting big movements at the other end. So if you make a tiny little small error down here where you're generating the motion, that air, that air is going to be amplified just like the entire motion of the lever. Okay. Um, so that's a problem. So you get the range of motion, but you also get something that's more difficult to control. And that's just basic lever mechanics. Really no simpler way to, to put it than that. Um, now the other benefit of writing with your arm is that these muscles are really big and strong enough to move a pencil and pen around all day long. So the weight of this pencil and pen in my hand is not nearly enough to tire out the muscles in your arm. Okay. So you can write for a very long time with your arm, not get any fatigue, not have any pain. Uh, you know, it's almost like the muscles are too big <laughs> for this system. And that's part of the problem too. You know, you have these big muscles trying to make these small little movements, okay? All right, so now that's how the arm movement system works. And that really explains to you why writing with your arm is so difficult. Uh, now let's just look at the converse example, which is writing with your fingers or your hand. Um, so here we have our writing with our fingers. Um, our power source is going to be kind of the hand muscles back here in the hand. Um, so they're back here. Our pivot point is kind of where we're gripping the pen, pencil or pen, and then our weight is the tip of the pencil. Okay, so in this system, we have our fulcrum or pivot point very close to the weight and further away than where the power source is. Okay, so if we go back to our ruler. Instead of having the fulcrum down here, it's down here. So in the finger writing system, you can put big inputs into the system as far as motion goes, and you get a smaller input out. Okay. Now this is an exaggerated example because what you also notice is that the lever system of finger writing is much shorter. So it's only from here to here, not the whole length of the arm. So it might actually be better to actually use this pencil as our lever. And it's like this. And you can see when you have a shorter lever, you get more control. I talked about how a longer lever, less control, shorter lever, more control. And you can see how I have to put big motions in to get small motion out. All right. Now the great thing about that is you have great control because you can make errors. Any errors you make at your source of your power get reduced at the pencil point. Um, but then the downside of that is you have to make these motions with the hand, these big motions with the hand to get small motion out at the pencil point, And your hand is just not designed to make big motions. Okay. It's not designed to contract and expand in this way, a pencil, hand's really good for gripping things, holding on to things, and that's about it. It's not designed to make motions in and out, okay? So that's why your hand gets fatigued and tired. So these are the two lever systems of arm writing and finger writing. Hopefully that explains 
why finger writing is so tired and painful and then why arm writing is so uh, pain free and easy but hard to control and in the next video we're going to talk about how how to tackle this problem a little bit and we're going to start with that by looking back at what uh, what they did in the early late 1800s and early 1900s when they when everybody was writing with arm movement not I mean not everybody but everybody was learning at a young age to write with it and whether they chose to go on and do that throughout their life was their decision but they were trying to teach every young kid to write with their arm and we're going to talk about why they were teaching um, kids to write that way and how they were doing it okay so that'll be the next video and that'll get it into a little bit more of uh, what you can do to start learning to write or draw with your arm. So hopefully this explains a lot in just in terms of defining the problem. I think that's so important. Know what you're up against. Writing and drawing with your arm, it can add so much to your art, a sense of grace, freedom, range of motion that you just can't get with your finger writing. So um, I encourage you to explore it more. Watch the second video. I'll link to it in the description. Thanks for watching this one. Subscribe if you haven't to the channel. Like this video. If, if you, uh, if you enjoyed it and leave a comment uh, or question in the comment section, I'd love to hear from you and follow me on Instagram. I'm at perfect biscuits. You can see me writing with arm movement there in the traditional, uh, American style of, uh, just practical penmanship or a traditional cursive writing. Uh, if you want to just see what arm movement writing looks like, that's a great place to do it. I'll also link to some other videos that are related to this on my YouTube channel where I've done some arm writing and show, how this all works from a traditional standpoint, but I really wanna make these videos accessible to uh, anybody that wants to manipulate a pen or pencil with their arm, whether they're doing calligraphy or drawing or painting or something like that. So thanks for watching, uh, perfectbiscuits.com. You can contact me there as well if you wanna reach out privately. So thank you for watching and check out part two.